Good evening. I'd like to call to order the July 23rd, 2019 meeting of the Historic Preservation Board for the City of West Palm Beach. Could we please begin with a roll call? Amanda Skyer. Here. Theodore Aspergren. Here. Kristen Kellogg. Here. Dan Pickney. Here. Takara Chambers. Here. Gabriel Jaroslawski. Here. Ken Breslauer. Here. Reginald Stambaugh. Let the record reflect that Reginald Stambaugh is not present. Nick Satley. Let the record reflect that Nick Satley is not present. We now move on to approval of the agenda for tonight's meeting. Do we have any changes to the agenda as presented? No changes, Madam Chair, but I did want to point out to the board that item 7.2, it's case number 19-37 for 427 51st Street, is withdrawn. We had to keep on, on the agenda this evening because it was published in the paper, but the uh, roof was resolved at a staff level. They switched after publication from a shingle to a tile, which is what was there originally. So that will not be heard this evening. Great. Thank you. Do we have any members of the board that would like to make any changes to the agenda? No. Okay, seeing none, can we have a motion to approve? I move that we approve the agenda for July 23rd, 2019 for the Historic Preservation Board. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to approval of the minutes from the June 25th meeting. Do we have any changes to the minutes as presented? Okay, can we have a motion to approve? I move that we approve the minutes for the June 25th, 2019 meeting of the Historic Preservation Board of West Palm Beach. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. We now move on to the report of the Historic Preservation Planner. Good evening, Frederick Metner. Just a brief update. Since your last meeting, staff has had 103 level one applications come in, so busy summer. Mm -hmm. One level two and 35 zoning reviews. And no other updates at this time. Thank you. We now move on to remarks by the chairperson. The matters before us are quasi-judicial in nature, which means we base our decisions on competent, substantial evidence that comes before us. And we ask you to please keep this in mind while speaking. How it works is for each case, the applicant will make a presentation followed by a staff presentation. We'll then open it up to public comment and then the applicant will have a chance for rebuttal if there is any public participation. And after that, we will go into executive session where we will make our decision. To lead into this, we need to let you know if we've had any conversations outside of this meeting. So we will begin with a declaration of ex parte communications. Takara Chambers, I did speak with Ms. Mittner regarding the cases. However, I'm able to make my decisions tonight based on the evidence before me. Gabe Charoslavsky, I received a phone call from Mr. Nelson regarding case 1934 in the consent list. Um, however, I can make my own decisions based on the evidence presented. Theodora Aspergren, no ex parte communication. Amanda Skyer, I did speak to Ms. Mittner about the cases on tonight's agenda, but I can make my decisions based on the evidence presented. Kristen Kellogg, no ex parte communication. Dan Pickney, no ex parte communications. Ken Breslauer, no ex parte communications. Okay, do we have any members of the public here to speak on an item that's not on the agenda? Now would be the time to do so. Okay, seeing none, we will move, in, move on to the swearing in of our speakers. If you plan to speak, please rise and raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give tonight is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you so much. We have two consent cases on tonight's agenda. Can we please have a motion to approve? I move that we approve the consent cases, case number 19-34 for 3011 Poinsettia Avenue and case 19-36 for 744 Avon Road. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, if you are 3011 Poinsettia Avenue or 744 Avon Road, your project has been approved. 
Moving on to new business, case number 19-35, 218 Edgewood Drive. Do you want to use this podium for this present, if you, oh, or sure. do you not, if you want to yeah. use the... Um, it's just as simple as that. The Can it go backwards, back. too? Yep. Backspace. Oh, I did not do that. <coughs> yeah, I think you're gonna have to go old school. Okay, slide. I can scroll. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is David Gangler. I'm the uh, president of Gangler Architects, and it's my pleasure to be presenting to you today uh, our design for 218. Um, sorry, Edgewood <laughs> Drive, and I have the owner here as well, Mr. Gus Rennie. Edgewood, uh, let's see, we're in the site plan. Edgewood is in the uh, Southland Park District, SF 14-C3. Uh, this district is somewhat unique in that the lots are relatively large lots. Our um, lot is 100 feet wide by 127 feet deep. Uh, but the way the zoning code is written, it actually favors uh, two-story homes with small footprints. They only give you 20% lot coverage. So the 20% lot coverage is a very big factor in the way that we have our house designed. The owner actually really wanted a single uh, story house, but after going through the numbers, it just wasn't uh, possible. Um, he did, however, had one request that whatever we did with the addition to the uh, historic residence, uh, that we had a first floor master suite. That was a very essential to the project as well, which on the screen is in this upper left corner here, part of the addition. Go back one slide. Sorry. The original house you can see on the bottom of this slide was built in 1949. It's a charming wood-framed Florida ranch-style vernacular with wood siding, shutters, exposed rafter tails, and single-hung windows as its primary architectural features. There is an original front porch supported by four by four wood columns and a single car garage that faces the street. Above the garage is a small tower loft. In the slide, you see the shaded area right here is the existing structure. And it is approximately 1,750 square feet. And what we have designed, uh, I don't know if you can tell on the slide, but it's shaded in right here is the addition, just behind the existing house, is 4,850 square feet. This is an increase of 3,100 square feet. But, however, per the zoning FAR regulations, we're actually permitted up to 5,080 square feet. So we are a little bit more than 200 square feet under the maximum. Our goal for this design was to create a livable sized four bedroom, four bath home. Uh, it also has an office. Uh, which preserves the original facade entirely. Um, we also wanted to give the new owners protection of a, a concrete block structure and hurricane impact windows and, and doors as well. So what we've done uh, here, as you can see, by splitting the existing gable roof of the original structure in half longitudinally, we're able to push the new two-story block structure right up behind it. Uh, really not touching the historic structure facade at all. It gives the uh, appearance of a, a unified structure, although you can still tell the difference between the old and the new. We've created several covered porches and outdoor living areas to escape the Florida sun and the rain, of course. Uh, but it also helps blend the new architectural features with the historic ones. We mimic the uh, wood siding uh, on the second floor and have exposed rafter tails 
over all of the new structures. I'm sorry, in the eaves of all of the new structures. Uh, because there is a hip roof on the original tower structure, and just because I like hip roofs better, <laughs> we decided that we we're going to have a double pitched uh, hip roof over all new structures. It also gives um, a little bit of distinguishment from the original structure. I like this very style. Uh, like this style very much. It reminds me of a southern beach cottage. I see the body of the house in a soft ivory white color with white windows, light blue shutters. Um, I don't see the roof as being an asphalt shingle roof, which is what's there now. Uh, so what I'm hoping is that you'll allow us to have a cedar shake uh, roof in a like a weathered warm gray color. Okay. As for the size of our footprint, as proposed, our lot coverage is 3,162 square feet. This is a little bit over the 20% requirement. We're actually at 24.9%. However, there are two special exceptions uh, in the zoning code for historic residences where you can increase the lot coverage. And I'd like to, if you will, uh, read a couple of those. Uh, section 94-85, Special Exception Standards for Historic Residential Structures, subsection E. Uh, this has to do for light, uh, an increase in lot coverage uh, and floor area exceptions for detached rear uh, accessory structures. So with the uh, design of having our detached structure in the back, you are actually get an increase of 3% total lot coverage uh, with staff approvals uh, or the approval of staff. Subsection F, uh, for lot coverage and floor area ratios, uh, there's an exception through a special exception review, which is by your approval uh, here tonight. And it says that any proposed lot coverage or floor area ratio exception must meet the intent of the design guidelines, incorporate design elements that reduce the visual massing, and meet one or more of the following criteria. There are five criteria. I'm gonna read you uh, number two. It says that it allows for an addition to an, ex to an existing one-story contributing historic principal structure. And although our structure is two stories. The massing of the building is really one story. It has that little tower on top. Um, I feel like it looks like a one story house. I don't know if how you guys feel about that either, but there's also number five. And number five says, the criteria number five, it says it, the design results in a structure utilizing green building standards and green building provisions adopted by the city commission this would garner a 2% increase in total lot coverage with historic preservation approval. The total maximum for increases they give you is 9%. What we're asking for is five, 3% 3 for the detached garage, 2% for the special exception for green building features. The green building features that we are presenting is an overall increase in the thermal resistance of the attic insulation from R30, which is required, to R40 using closed cell uh, foam insulation. Uh, additionally, number two, thermally broken aluminum windows with low E double pane insulated glass, which will also decrease the heat transfer uh, U factor from 0.65 to 0.60. Third, we're going proposing to increase the efficiency of the air conditioning equipment from the required 16 SEER uh, to a carrier's newly advanced Infinity Green Series, which is a 20 SEER unit. SEER is the seasonal energy efficiency ratio. The higher the number, the better. It ranges from 13 to 21, and we're proposing 20. We also plan on installing natural gas appliances where we can, water heaters, generators, and it's my, I just heard from the owner today that they do have natural gas for that lot, so that is part of the plan. I do believe that with all these green building features, we will provide substantial energy savings 
and much, much less energy consumption throughout the life of the um, structure. With that, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take questions or however the... Thank you. Questions of the applicant? What is the existing ceiling height? It is an eight foot ceiling height. And then what you have shown on here, is it nine? I think I'm looking at it correctly, nine two is what you're I have changing it to? 10 foot two on the first floor and nine foot on the second floor, I believe. And the existing roof is a triangular truss. We're proposing that we open the bottom of that truss so the spring point starts at eight feet and then goes up to 10 feet to the new structure, giving the, for the two rooms that you enter into, which is the dining room and the living room, a much grander feeling. We are allowed um, up to 20 feet to the top of the building wall per the code at the building setback. And every foot further away from the setback you go, you get an additional foot in height. So I believe the top of our wall is at 20 feet eight, and we are 11 feet away from the property line. So I believe we are within the, the height limits. If I may all, as well, the garage structure um, has an even lower ceiling because the finished floor of the main house is about 18 inches higher than the garage. So what we've done, which we think will work, is that we, we're keeping the garage on the front of the house, but more not as a garage, but more as an outdoor storage. And we are taking the floor out of the tower and creating a two-story space, which would be a two-story office uh, for the owner, um, rather than have two rooms that have, you know, seven and a half foot ceilings. You know, have one 15 foot space. Hmm. Can you explain to us the reason for the flare roof? You know, to have it, you know, was not part of the original structure. So sure. why you choose uh, to flare the roof with two different slopes? Well, it's a good question. We started with uh, um, regular uh, hip roof. Um, the lean-to roof on the front over the porch is flared out a little bit. It didn't factor in to what we were, what we were doing. I believe it was the massing. And when we drew it with the larger gabled roof, it felt like a larger roof by uh, lessening that flared part at 3 to 12 rather than 5 to 12. I think it comes off as a little bit less massive For the roofing material, you intend to use um, real cedar, not an imitation material? Our plan is to use cedar shake. Okay. It has not been followed through to the, the pricing and okay. you know, purchasing, and we're hoping that that fits within the budget. We, you know, we love it. It will look great. Uh, I do know that they have a tremendous amount of alternate you know, materials that as long as they are approved, uh, you know, we could substitute for and have the same look. It wouldn't be our first choice. Okay. Well, just I think that would be something when you get to that point that perhaps you work with staff in case the decision is made not to use actual wood. Sure. That, that just to make sure it's that they're aware and sometimes yeah. things happen as the project gets going and. Well, I, 
I could say that I live in the neighborhood. I live at 130 Greenwood Drive. Mm -hmm. I, did a, I did a great renovation there. I live there with my yes, wife. Yes, I was going to ask you, this is, your sec this is your second project, right, in the neighborhood? This will be the fourth. Oh, the fourth. Yeah, I, I also uh, did 321 Grayman Drive, which came out beautiful. Thank you for your help to that. Um, I did uh, 130 Greenwood, 218 Edgewood, and I'm working on 112 Roosevelt right now. Oh, good. I live there. I live in that neighborhood, and I take... I do take this serious, as Frederica could probably contest because I bother her with emails, <laughs> but um, I do take it serious and I do want to make sure that it does fit the scope of the neighborhood and I, and I just, I, I really enjoy doing it. So, you know, we're here to try to do everything to be as compliant and do what you guys ask. Make it look as just as nice. Great. No, I wish people did more cedar shake roofs because I think um, with a wood frame structure like this, it would look nice. It really look good. Yeah. yeah. Um, do we have any further questions of the applicant? I see a, uh, a roof in, the, in A02. I see, um, I guess it's a, a pool, loggia, cabana. Oh, the gazebo. Hmm? Yes. So it's just an outdoor covered area. It's an outdoor covered area. We were very tight on the lot coverage according to the zoning rules. As long as there's no walls enclosing the roof space, it does not count towards lot coverage. So rather than having the summer kitchen area with outdoor dining attached to the house, we moved it to the other side of the pool. And although that's not ideal location for it, uh, it definitely works. And it also creates a visual access point when you walk in through the front doors and you look through the glass. That's kind of like the end of the axis. I just have a question that's more or less for my, um, for my own information. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm more familiar with um, uh, northern structures than, than uh, South Florida, Floridian structures. When you have a, a cedar-shaped roof down here, um, how do you prevent moss growth, um, what you call um, mold, that kind of thing, you know, that could cause rapid deterioration? Uh, it's a good question, and this roof is uh, a special roof, not normal in this area, and we would definitely make sure that we found out the, if there, there needs to be a sealer applied annually to prevent the mold growth, or if there is a 10-year, 20, 30-year warranty on this product that it says that it won't grow. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a concern, especially in Florida. You, you definitely don't want to have something that's going to create a problem. So. Uh, if we found out that that was a problem, we would certainly ask for a replacement or a synthetic material that would not uh, yeah. rot. Or, or I mean, rot. like with, with, with oil lumber, too, you can't get old growth cedar like you were able to get 100 years ago. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and very Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. While I pull up um, my presentation, there is actually the Dutch Colonial in Grandview Heights has a cedar shake roof they put on a couple years ago, and it looks great. I haven't seen any growth on it, but I don't know how it was treated. So, um, and I think there's a few, few around. Um, Okay, uh, Frederick Metner, staff presenting case 19-35 for the alterations and additions, specifically the two-story addition and a, a detached one-story uh, two-car garage at 218 Edgewood Drive. Um, I'll be brief because the applicant covered most of this, but as he indicated, uh, Prospect Southland Park does have a lot of larger home, uh, larger lots, especially on Edgewood Drive, as this lot is located in the center part of the block on the south side. Uh, here's an image of the property and some kind of from the side and this would this open area is in the back is where the garage is proposed to go. It is a contributing structure and this is the, some these are some context photos. So you have a lot of two-story homes on the street, actually primarily two-story homes and a lot of them have that um, horizontal siding. So be very much in keeping with that character. So again, the request was for the 2177 square foot two-story addition. Our numbers are a little bit different than what you heard before because of how we calculate them. If it's a porch, we only calculate them as 50%. So everything they're proposing to you does meet 
the zoning regulations if you uh, include the bonuses for the detached uh, structure uh, and the special exception, which is an option here. And the detached structure is 510 square feet. Again, the site uh, plan with the hardscape landscape. Here's Edgewood Drive up to the north of the first floor plan which again does include that master bedroom suite and one of our special exception rules. I know they're utilizing the green building standards, which is probably more appropriate, but one of them was also to allow a bedroom on the first floor uh, to keep in mind how uh, people age in homes and have the ability to have a ground floor master bedroom. And then as you can see, the second floor is really condensed um, in the center part of the lot uh, and in the part of the house. Uh, the front elevations that you already saw, again, retaining everything that exists, including the light pattern um, in the center here, this kind of uh, three-part window, just adding a railing here and utilizing a more appropriate paired uh, single hung in this opening. These are the side elevations. Again, there's a clear distinction between the old and the new, where the new does have smooth stucco on the bottom and siding on the second floor. Here again, a clear delineation of what's the existing structure versus the new, but staying behind the original uh, ridge line. And these are the elevations for the detached garage, also with that flare on the roof line, which I think again further differentiates it. Um, so in reviewing the application, um, we do believe it meets our additional compatibility criteria and Secretary of Interior standards number nine and 10, and therefore we're recommending approval uh, as submitted. And I also want to read into the record two emails I received uh, in support of the application. One's from Gordon Springmeyer. Uh, good, Frederick, good morning. We received a notice in the mail yesterday regarding the 218 Edgewood homeowner requesting approval for some home additions. I wanted to let you know I live about two houses away from this location. We are looking forward to this home improvement. I believe what is being proposed is very reasonable and will greatly improve the street. We have also spoken with other homeowners on Edgewood and they also feel the same. Everyone is looking forward to this and we hope you will do what you can to help with a timely approval. If there's anything else we can do to support this, please let me know. Thank you, Gordon Springmeyer. And another email. Hi, Frederica, I just received a notice in the mail regarding additions and renovations for 218 Edgewood Drive. As a resident on the street, I would definitely be in favor of this as it will add value to the neighborhood, our street, and ultimately our house. We still have a few houses on that street to clean up with this being one of them. I'm in favor of the changes and just wanted to make sure I voiced my opinion. Thank you, Stephanie Prince. So I'm happy to answer any questions on the proposal. In the description here, it said that um, approved with conditions. Is that just a typo? And no, yeah. thank you for, uh, that was brought to my attention. I should have clarified that right away. That was a typo. It is approved um, as presented or as submitted. Within the district, are there any other historic homes with original broken pitch roofs? With the proposed new roof line, I don't think so. Thank you. Now, I was going to ask historically, what styles would that be found on? Um, I'd say some of the Bermuda styles have it, but okay. um, I, I don't think there are any of that example in the district. Yeah, I mean, it's a very British West Indies look. So we have, according to the, the report we have, it's a minimal traditional house. And then the sort of the addition, it's a, it would basically be a character defining feature of a different style historically. And in practice, have you found that a, a broken pitch roof does minimize the appearance of the, the height or? Um, I saw some previous iterations of the design and the roof does look a lot more massive. Um, it do, I don't know how many feet it added. I don't have that. When it's not the broken too. pitch, it looks right. more, okay. Right. Do you know if it was five and 12 before? I don't, I don't have those originals. Perhaps the um, architect could answer that. What is the pitch of the existing? Do we know? Would you mind coming up to the microphone just because we are broadcasting? I 
I want to say the main gable roof is 512. It has a very steep pitch. You could probably see from the side elevation, but the lean-to roof goes more to uh, 2.5, more of a flat roof, as well as the uh, hip roof over the tower. Did you look at doing a 4 and 12, just a straight 4 and 12 pitch? Uh, no, but it's a good point, valid point, that we could lessen the, the massiveness of the roof by changing the pitch. Um, 412 is a typical roof pitch for tile roofs. Um, I guess shingle roofs too, but 312 maybe for shingle roofs. You could even go lower if you, if you wanted to, to lessen you know, the massiveness of the roof. Thank you. Is that something that you would be open to as a condition of approval? I believe so. I don't think the broken pitch makes or breaks the project. I do like that style. It is different from the original. I thought that we were kind of combining what was old with what was new and creating something fun. But I know it's a historic neighborhood, and if, if that's just not allowed, then I'm fine to have a standard pitched roof on it. I do believe that the wood cedar shake roof uh, looks just as attractive on a unbroken mm -hmm. plane roof as it does on a broken plane. Okay, and you'd be okay with a four over 12 pitch? Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And that was my primary concern. Any further questions of staff? Okay, thank you. Do you have any members of the public? I think not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> seeing none. Uh, we'll go into executive session. Um, I mean, I think we see a lot of, um, well, not too many, but we see a fair amount of second story additions in this house, I think, lends itself well to it, more so than a ranch house. <laughs> um, so I think it's well executed, and, and with that um, change to the pitch, which they're willing to accommodate, I think that it'll be a very good fit. Um, for the original structure and maintain the um, traditional detailing. It looks like it's pushed over 20 feet back from the front facade too, which I know sometimes when we have people come in looking to do something similar, it's not pushed back as far. And I think that pushing it back as far as they did gives a little bit more respect to the historic structure. I agree. It doesn't overwhelm it. You can see the evolution of the building. Any further discussion or would someone like to make a motion with uh, the one condition that we discussed? I, uh, I'm assuming that the, the, roof, the original roof on the original house is going to be uh, cedar as well? Yes, I believe they're re-roofing the, yeah. The whole thing. Oh, Ms. Mintner, do you feel that we need to, to add any condition regarding the cedar since I don't think there's any specifications no, for No, I roofing? think that's clear because if it changes from what was submitted, then we would either address it at a staff level or okay. if it was significant enough, bring it back to the board. Okay. I move that the Historic Preservation Board approve application number 19-35 for alterations and additions in accordance with standards 9 and 10 as set forth in section 94-49 of the City's Zoning and Land Development Regulations. The motion is based on the testimony presented along with the application submitted and the staff report, which constitutes confident substantial evidence. In addition, the approval of this request is made conditional 
upon the following restrictions, stipulations, and or safeguards that I move are necessary to ensure compliance with the purpose and intent of the historic preservation ordinance, historic preservation element of the comprehensive plan of the city of West Palm Beach, the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, specifically standards nine and 10, and the land development regulations. The condition includes the following that the addition on the roof have a straight pitch of no greater than four and 12. Do we have a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We look forward to seeing the finished product. Moving on to case number 19-38, 2111 South Flagler Drive. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Hello, I'm Anand Patel and this is Lou. Um, we are the owners of 2111 South Flagler we're doing a, a renovation and we're uh, almost complete with the renovation which was approved by, uh, um, by, by the board. Uh, unfortunately the general contractor was going to be here today but he got sick so I'm having to, I'm going to do the best I can. But this is a letter that he wrote um, in, in support of this application. Uh, we're having an issue with the front door of the house. So the, 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 uh, the actual door is made of wood and um, if, as you can see here, he explains that the restoration of this particular door is virtually impossible as the door is cracked in several places and is actually bowing. So we're here to request uh, the ability to be able to change the door to, to replicate the door ex uh, using the same features, using the exact same glass that's in the old door um, so it can be, can be usable. Uh, I can show you some pictures of it. Um, I don't know if you read that letter, that mic. Okay, how are you doing? Oh, this is, this is the letter. Oh, did you read that? Okay. I see the pictures. Okay, so this is the existing door which we've kept. Um, as you can see, there's some crack lines in the middle of the door. Um, the glass is still preserved, and uh, we've been very careful to make sure it, you know, it stays that way, although it's a very, very thin piece of glass, and uh, it's been quite difficult, obviously, in a construction site, trying to keep it intact. Um, the hardware, as you can see, is probably not original. It's been replaced somewhere along, somewhere along the time. And this is another, another crack that you can see. Three quarter inch crack, yeah. uh, there's another crack there in the door. And that one's three quarter inches deep on that one. Yep. I think the biggest issue of the door is, is the door is actually bowed. It's, that's it. it's actually out of shape. It's kind of like bowed. So it's going to be very difficult to take apart. And if it takes apart, it's not going to be original anyway because they're going to have to replace the wood um, to repair it. So we have a proposal by a company, which is Florida Impact who have looked at the door and can use the old glass and the features inside the door to make it look exactly the same. That's it. When the house was purchased or when you started on this project, was the door in this poor of condition or did it become this way during the course of construction? Um, I think it was already cracked, um, but it's... It, it was it was already cracked. It was stiff to open up and uh, and and close. Um, it was in it was in bad shape. 
So what you're, the door that you're proposing from the exterior, there's impact glass over the original glass? Correct. And what is the thickness of the door? It would be the same thickness door. as the old one. Is that, I'm not sure if it's shown here. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't show the thickness, but uh, it would be, has the original door, the same thickness. And what is the door made out of, the impact door? Uh, it's wood. Completely wood? Yeah. Regarding the repair or restoration, have you sought out quotes from any companies that are not affiliated with the general contractor? Uh, I believe the general contractor has actually um, taken the door to several people to try and get it, to get, get an opinion if it can be repaired. And the consensus was that once they start taking it apart, it's, it's going to be demolished. Do you know if there are people that have done historic projects before? Uh, I think we showed it to a group called Fosion um, in West Palm Beach. There are they do historic renovations in the area, and they were the one, one of the people that told us that it was uh, it's not able to be put back together if it was taken apart. Do you have a report from them available? No, I don't, no. Okay. So this project originally came before us back in 2007, and I know I was on the board at that point. Oh, sorry, 2017, okay, not like, seven. I was not here <laughs> in 07. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and I'm not sure who else was on the board at that time, but we drive by this project all the time, like everyone in the city does, I'm sure. It's a very prominent location. And I do feel like as a board, we were pretty generous with what we allowed with such um, an important contributing structure. And there were just a couple of conditions that were made to retain the character defining features of the house. And this was one of them, that this had to remain. So it's very disappointing after all of this work that we've seen done to the house. I mean, the house was basically stripped completely. And this is one of the singular original features that was to remain, to see it coming back before us. And I understand the condition that it's in. We do have people in the area, I know one in particular, that does an excellent job at restoring doors. And I mean, I'm an architect, I'm sure that Gabe could speak to the same, but whenever you replace a door, it never, ever looks the same as the original. I mean, if anyone else has experience to the contrary. No. I mean, what can you say is original remaining other than this? Um, well, the front of the house, the balcony, the features of the house are original. I mean, the um, exterior walls, because it walls, was completely yeah. gutted, correct? It was gutted. I mean, that was in the proposal, in the plans. Um, well, unfortunately, the interior was. Well, yeah. unfortunately, we don't have any purview over the interior, but I, I mean, I, I live in El Cid and I'm very familiar with this house, and I know it had all the original interior features, and it was heartbreaking to see. A work, an original work by Maurice Fascio with such a high level of architectural integrity just completely destroyed. Well, and now this last vestige of the authenticity is, is you're asking to, to destroy it. Yeah, sure. But I mean, I disagree with you a little bit because the house had been destroyed over a period of time by additions and by amendments to the house. I mean, the windows, every single ha window in that house was different. There was nothing original about it. There was a horrible addition to the back. I don't know who approved it, but that should have never been approved to that house. So we've actually brought it back into keeping with the patio design, not taking it away, further away. What was there was far away from what the original architect uh, envisioned for the property. I mean, you've seen the pictures. It, there was a one-story addition to the property which was totally out of character. It was a Florida trailer home stuck to the back of the home. Um, every window in the house was different. Um, 
So, I mean, I think we've actually brought it back into keeping with what the original design should have looked like and what a, you know, what a family would want to see in that design. We've also, um, one of the things about Maurice Fazio, we also hired a decorator who is really taken pride in, in Mauricio Fazio, and she's a student of his, in a sense, and she has, in the inside of the house, is going to be so much more Mauricio Fazio house than it was when we bought it. So, so, she, so we are really keeping into that, that theme. So, Yeah, we're spending a lot of, of time and effort, money, into the landscaping, again, which is Art Deco in style. The fittings are going to be Art Deco in style. Um, I mean, the fireplace is still the original, and we've preserved it, and we're rebuilding the whole fireplace to look Art Deco in style. I mean, the fireplace was covered up in the old house. Um, I mean, the committee didn't see that, but it was covered up. We've exposed it, and we're, we've renovated it, and we're going to put a nice Art Deco mantle around it. So the house is going to be in keeping with the Art Deco styling. Minus the central staircase that you see well, there. Well, I mean, we did um, put that in our plans, and um, that was a talking point at the time. But... Yeah. Um, you know, we could have kept it, but obviously it's gone now. And I think that's the point we're trying to make. We're in the position we're in now, right? I mean, what was original Fascio is no longer there. And this is one of the only, only original features. I mean, I saw the house, you know, day after day during construction. So I know what's still there and what's not, whether or not you're endeavoring to make it similar to the original style. When you delete original features from the architect, I don't think you can really say that it's going to be more of his style than it was when he did it. Well, when, we, when we purchased it, I mean, it was in really bad shape. The, I mean, the original features, features were, were still gone. there. So they you're saying gone. that the, the original staircase was there. Oh, yeah. The built-in bench in that, under that bay window, yes. that large window. Yeah. I'm sure that the glass block wall on the back was removed with the addition. No, we've actually added a glass block wall. But not the original one. Not the original one, no. That's, I, I think the differentiation here is original features that we're trying to, to talk about. Is This is one thing that's original. That's it's still there. It's basically but it's the usable. only <laughs> character defining feature. Well... I mean, this is what I do for a living, yeah. right? So I'm looking at the pictures, and yes, I can see that the, like the door needs substantial, substantial work, but I think that there's a difference between making this an impact unit from a company that does impact units versus getting someone, I don't even think we're supposed to say the name, but getting someone local that we know can do this kind of work. I'd love to hear to the name. To basically repair I, we're, we're, I mean, it was, by the way, it, Having the original door restored will save us a lot of money. Impact doors are not cheap. It does save so, a lot of money. So yeah. I, I, I would welcome it, but I mean, we've been told by professionals that it's not restorable, so that's why we're here. Yeah, and I would have to assume that they just have not done work like this in the area before and don't know the, some of the people that yeah. are willing to do this I mean, if you're happy for your work. staff to recommend somebody that we can talk to. Staff is not allowed to recommend someone. Um, maybe Mrs. Mittner can give us some sort of the city attorney can give us some sort of guidance on how we could get some names of people that we know that can do this kind of restoration work to them. We can perhaps provide a list of names in town that we're aware of, but I don't think we can provide a formal recommendation. We can't guarantee that they do good work oh, or that's anything a, that's of fine. that nature. Yeah. Yeah. We're open to keeping the original door, um, but right now we're, we're being told that it's not feasible or workable. For us, this one letter and the pictures, is, it's not enough evidence. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't feel like it's been exhaustive, and, and I mean, that's... That's preservation, you know, anything can be done for the most part. And I mean, I think that we've seen enough projects come through here that we're confident that this can be restored, which is why we felt comfortable adding it as a condition at the time. And I, I don't think we've mentioned that this is a tax exemption project. Correct. So, I mean, this is a, they're going to be a substantial savings. I mean, how large is, is your addition? How many uh, square feet? Like 
I mean, the total house is 5,200 square feet. So, I mean, it's going to be a substantial tax savings. Sure, sure. And so, th as a board, we feel that it's really important that this feature remain. Okay. So, would you like us to go away and contact these people and maybe come back next month if they say no? Or if they say yes, then, you know, we don't have to come back. How would you like us to proceed? Well, I think if you could go and explore it for further and talk to some people that specialize in this, and, and I'm sure that um, you perhaps could provide your contacts to Ms. Mittner, who can put together a... Just an example list. Yes, within an the example community. list. But yeah. you're yeah. free That'll to explore other options. Could we ask for a little bit more than that? Um, uh, give them the list, and whoever they go to see, that that company has to provide us with a letter that says it can or cannot do it? Correct. Yes, sure. yes. So we would need like a, something from a professional that like specializes <clears throat> in this kind of work saying that it can't be done. Sure, and by the way, we would like it to be done. So if, if somebody could do it, I mean, the, that's a $15,000 door. I mean, restoring the old door is not going to cost us $15,000. And I do think that in the historic neighborhoods, this is like front doors that have the character defining feature just overall, not even this project, are generally important to retaining the character. Especially, I mean, this is just one example, but we have a lot of Mediterranean structures that are the same way. And just so you know, we, the reason why this is a $15,000 door is because they want that we've asked them to copy it exactly with the lines, the glass, the shape of the glass, and use the old glass and still make it to code, which is basically a, a, a very custom project. So, you know, we're trying to preserve the old door. You know, we're not looking to change the feature. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. So I will get with Frederick and... Okay, great. Yeah? Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Do you have any further questions? No. Okay. Do we need to make a motion? Well, I think well, we have to hear to staff's oh, okay. yeah. Thank presentation. You. Thank you. Thank you. And, and staff's going to make in, a presentation. I live in Elsett also in a historic home on Granada. So oh, I mean, okay. we're trying to do everything we can to keep this a you know, historic home. So. Okay. Great. Thank you. And if you could please stay for the staff presentation. We're still, yeah, the, the case is not over. So. <laughs> Okay, Frederic Metner, I'll give a brief overview since I think there's direction here already on case 19-38 for alterations at 2111 South Flagler Drive. As you know, the subject property is on the west side of Flagler Drive in the El Cid Historic District. This was an image that we took yesterday of the uh, progress on the project. And this is kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of when the case was in front of you back in August of 2017. And this is where you can see the door, uh, clearly still installed. And then they have taken it out during construction I, uh, for safekeeping and just using this door during the project. Um, and then kind of as much as we could zoom in from what we had before, again, uh, the entry location and the original door that you saw in the pictures. Some of the pictures that the applicant showed you on the screen, uh, it was white. That's actually the interior of the door. The door is this wood color and um, one of the pictures shows that it still is without paint in the exterior and that's how it was originally. Um, this is, as has been mentioned, a Fascio design house known as the Marshall and Vera Rinker House, a 1938 contributing art modern. And as we mentioned, the case was in front of you in August under case 17-56, and the board approved the significant modifications with four conditions. The first one, to retain the front door, hence the applicant is in front of you. Two, to leave the single door to the patio as shown in the floor plans. Three, to maintain the hip roof, because they were proposing an alternate of a um, parapet roof. And four, retain the second floor middle window opening. So what was submitted to staff was that they would utilize the door. Again, what you're seeing here, this paint is the inside. And the uh, raw wood still does exist on the exterior. 
and would be replicating it with these three groove lines that do exist on the exterior portion. It would be covered with impact glass on the exterior over the original uh, decorative porthole. Unfortunately, it does not meet the Secretary of Interior standards um, because deteriorated features should be repaired rather than replaced. Uh, and again, this was a very specific condition and the last piece of an original uh, character defining feature of this home to maintain its integrity. So because it doesn't meet the Secretary of Interior standards, we're also recommending denial of the replacement and hope you do move, we are able to find someone that can restore the door. So we're recommending denial this evening. Can you go back to the comparison photos, sure. please? Yes. I have this one, or then I have the more zoomed in one. I didn't know which one you. This Let's is start with the first one. Yep. Mm -hmm. The window opening above the entry has been changed. Was that in the plans? That was a condition to retain that. So I can see that now that it is a little narrower originally, narrower and taller. I mean, I think that this is a really good example of when you replace windows and you put in new windows to match the existing, how different it is. And just, um, is that actually clear low-E glass? It is, yes. And is, so there's a substantial difference in, I mean, you're further back from the picture that you took from this picture. Yes, yesterday's picture is from the street instead of in the driveway. I'd be interested to know the measurements. I don't know if it's possible to find out what the measurements are. I mean, even the door, the placement of the door is different from the original door. There's a separation. Yes, I think that door is just because it has plywood around it to fit the original. No, no, on the, on the balcony. This door? Yes, there's a separation between the, the frame of the window and it looks like it's almost yes, continuous. Okay. I think they did it for impact. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's another thing when we're talking about the impact units, if you did put an impact unit in that front door, then you're like ripping out all that around it to strap into it. You know, the, there's like really subtle detailing. Is it still there though? I can't tell from the photo. It doesn't um, look like it. It doesn't look like that is. No. That's plywood. So that would be something that I we mean, definitely need to do. Even the, in the bow window here in the front, you see that the transoms and now they are entire window panes with probably a mounting behind it just to mimic what yeah. was before, but doesn't even match, you know, even close. It, is there? It, it doesn't. There is quite a difference there, but I did go back in the plans that were went to the board and those, what it, has been installed from the, those windows are what was went to the board. And what about the sill? Is there is the sill gone? Uh, it looks like that. We can um, do a field visit. And I don't know if it's just the lighting, but sort of the the covered area where the front door is. In the original photo, there's like a break in the stucco, a break on the face. Is that gone now too? That does look smooth. So I will confirm all those things with the um, contractor. Can you show us the other process. picture there from yes. further back, please? Yeah. So you see that also there is a line in between the right wall, you know, right of the door. There is a differentiation with the balcony above or with that piece of wall I that think is that above. Was the line no, they w go to the right. Yeah, here, that that one. line. Right. Yeah, that's what that's I was, the one she was oh, referring okay. to. Mm -hmm. Right here, this one. So when we're approving a door and window plate replacement, just generally, what do we do? Because obviously it's not, I know this is a little bit different because these are very special windows, but it's never really an in-kind replacement. So what are we supposed to be doing? Looking at the product approvals and trying to see if it actually is? Well, this is what the elevations looked like as well with the width of the um, horizontal mountain to give that 
transom appearance. So we so. should have been looking at what that sizing was for the mutton to compare it. Perhaps um, I have the. Were those original windows though that are here? I mean the jealousy maybe, but right. We. That's a good point. I don't know. Yeah. But what about the sill? Jealousy up here. What about the, the sill, sill and that detailing right. and? Um, I can reach out to the contractor and I'm taking notes. Um, the items you mentioned is this window size, the sill, the surround, and this piece here. So yeah, the, I, the center window is is critical for the look of the of the architecture of the house. It's a much you know narrower window and much right. taller. Also, let me ask you a question. It appears in this picture that they are planning to put a wall sconce there in between the windows up, upstairs. Here, yeah, yeah. Yes. So because that is a junction box. Mm -hmm. Is that allowed? We actually don't regulate light fixtures, or we haven't reviewed them in the past. But was that on the plans? I don't know. I can look into that. But that um, those decorative features whether it's mailboxes or light fixtures, is something, again, we typically have not reviewed. Okay. Or house numbers. I mean, there's some really great house numbers that match <laughs> the style of the font of the modern, but. So where are we with this? I mean, I think that these are very subtle things, but they're essential to maintaining the artistic intention, you know, of the architect. I'll make sure to reach out to the contractor and we'll have a response back to you on those um, by the next meeting as well as the door. That's what it sounded like. I would almost think that they need to be restored. They are rec recreated, reconstructed for this to be a tax abatement project for final approval. Are we able to do that? You always have the purview, if I may speak, um, after the completed work, to, and that's why the completed work does come back to you, if you feel it met, has met <clears throat> the intent of the standards and what was approved. I feel this building is really important and that it's really important that it's done right because it's never gonna be added back at a later point. It's now or never. Yeah, I mean, it's an important architect and important and prominent location. Any further questions of staff? So I guess um, the best thing would be to continue. Are you okay with continuing the case? Sure, yes, you are welcome to and I'm assuming we don't have public comment, <laughs> so. Yeah, so I'm not sure um, I can see the difference, the line. Um, I'm not sure if that was in the plans or not, but we'll, we'll definitely check it. But I agree with you that it, the line, if it was there originally, should probably be there, which is a quick fix. I mean, I don't think it's a, a major problem. Um, but as far as the windows go, I think they were all in the plans and approved by the set of plans that every single window was ordered as per the plans that were approved? Well, there were quite a few issues with the plans that were brought to us. There were a lot of inconsistencies, and I mean, I would welcome you, I'm sh I know you were here, but I would welcome you to go back and listen to that recording because I don't know if the person who was giving the presentation um, was aware of all of the inconsistencies in the plans that we pointed out, but I remember there were quite a few, and that window in particular was much larger in the plan, and that was something we specifically took issue with and requested that it be maintained the exact same dimensions as the original, and so it's disheartening to see that that was not followed when that was made a condition of approval. Yeah, it's actually um, condition number four in the approval. And I'm not an architect, so I don't draw the plans. I just... Correct, correct. And I, oh, I, yeah, pro I probably wouldn't even understand the inconsistencies you're talking about. So 
We they're, just, they're we, very just subtle. We, we just pay someone to do the job. They're very subtle, but I, it's all of those things they add up together to create something that's really special. And and as you know, um, Maurice Fascio was a very significant architect. Most of his work is in Palm Beach, and very little is in West Palm Beach. So it's important that we get this right. Sure, I agree with you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So any further discussion? Would someone like to make a motion to continue? I think staff has an understanding in the applicant. I don't think we need yeah. to add anything to the motion under the to continue to the next meeting. Okay. I move to continue case number 19-38 to our August Historic Preservation Board meeting. Do we have a second? Should we not make a stipulation that they meet with Frederick? to discuss to, uh, on preservation people for the door? Um, do you feel that's necessary to add it to the continuous, or do you think um, it's? I think we're clear. It, it'll probably be Aaron coordinating with them, actually, on um, who they can reach out to. OK. OK. Did we have a second? Sorry. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? OK. Thank you. We'll see you next month. Thank you. And with that, um, can person, can I, um, um, the comment I made about uh, the, the gentleman presenting letters from the, um, um, the door restoration people, I, I, I think that, you know, in the future, you know, we come across issues like this all the time where we're basically taking the word of, of the applicant that something has been done. And I think for the future, we, we need letters from to prove that they've gone out and, and done it. Um, yay or nay for a particular but uh, I mean we get the letter but today we didn't get the letter so the project the, the you know the request was not approved because we don't have a real fact that we can you know uh, con consider I think it's also important that the people that the letters are from are people that actually spe specialize in historic preservation because most of these historic projects you would get an architect, an engineer, a contractor out there that would say, we just need to do this from scratch because, well, number one, it's easier, it can be cheaper. And I do feel like it's our job to maintain the Secretary of the Interior Standards and also our compatibility, compatibility <laughs> criteria. Um, and just as part of that, I think they need to be professionals that are educated in historic preservation and understand historic preservation. I agree. I mean, just seeing historic renovations on the masthead of the letterhead from the contractor. I mean, even even without rather than you know, preservation, restoration. You know, the um, uh, the issue of, of of staff not being able to uh, recommend somebody. But it seemed to me that um, uh, the the department should have a list of, of, of uh, people who actually do this work. Just, just have it available. So when a letter comes in, you know that this was a, you know, an authentic person. And, yes. and if I could address that. Sure, so we, go ahead. We, again, as you know, we are not allowed to recommend. But we have resources available that we share, especially in tough situations, because it is hard to find people to restore wood windows. and. Um, however, the applicant came in, uh, not the owners, but the contractor, knowing that we were going to recommend denial and that this wasn't enough justification. But they requested to continue to be heard, and that's where um, we were required to move an application forward, if, even if we feel that there's not sufficient evidence, and hence we recommend a denial. So. Um, I have a, another question related to the door. Um, if it is. <clears throat> possible to restore the existing door and take the buckle out. If in taking the buckle out, it's required to put, let's say, um, a, a quarter inch mahogany laminate the on the back it. side, mm -hmm. is, is that okay? Yes, I think that, I mean, if that's the only way to achieve retaining as much of the original material as right. possible, then so I think that's you're a reasonable approach, yes, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because it may have to be planed down so far to achieve a straight door, but. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think that we always want them to provide more evidence. They don't always provide it, though. But definitely, I think as a rule of thumb, we want process. 
going forward. Though. Well, I think that I think that they let them know that that we need more information, yeah. and we can always encourage them. But that doesn't mean they're going to right. follow through because <laughs> it might not help their case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. And can we have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. <laughs> thank you.